I'm king of the sled track. Our intrepid trio are evolving the third installment in the Snowplow Trilogy. First, there was the curse of the snowplow. Forgot to activate the brake. Uh, you didn't activate the brakes! And while the sequel went a lot smoother, fans weren't happy. You want to see a snowplow split a car completely in half using whatever means necessary. Oh, crap, somebody graffitied all over our sled. <laughs> and the means that the Mythbusters are going to use is a cool 75,000 pounds of rocket thrust. But what's not so cool is the art Carrie has brought to the plow project. I added some finishing touches so that it'll look better on high speed. Now it's bright. Oh, you did this? Yeah, isn't it pretty? Perfect. Good job. So this is it, the final experiment for snowplow, and this is how it's gonna go down. This is our superplow that we're gonna load up with 12 rockets. It's gonna propel this sled 750 feet down the track going 500 miles an hour. But we actually need the sled to travel 770 feet because for the last 20 feet, it's gonna come off the track and fly through the air. It hit our target, this car. If all goes according to plan, only the wedge part of the super plow should cut right through the car and the rocket sled should slide right underneath. But before launch time, Grant gets the lowdown on the all important firepower. So the sled we're gonna use for our experiment, how many rockets are gonna be on that? We're gonna use 12 of these five inch HVARs. Each one has about 6,500 pounds of thrust. So total, we should get about 75,000 pounds of thrust on that one sled. What speed are we gonna be able to get up to? The sled should be going about 500 miles an hour when it impacts the car. So uh, do you have any extras of these just laying around? Yeah, don't touch that. And while the New Mexico Tech Techs lock and load their rockets, the Mythbusters are predicting the end of the road for the car. So far, we have not been able to split a car all the way in half with the snowplow. We used a front engine vehicle, that didn't work. We used a rear engine vehicle, that didn't work. But now we have a rocket-powered superplow. This thing is going to be going 500 miles an hour. I don't think it really matters where the engine is on this vehicle. Is it going to split it right in half? I don't think so. I have a feeling once it hits that engine, wherever the engine is, it's just gonna shred that car into a bunch of little pieces. Now I know what this rocket's like can do, and I've seen what a snowplow with a really sharp pointy tip can do to a car at 70 miles an hour. Now when this rocket sled's going 500 miles an hour into this car, I think it doesn't have a chance. It's not only gonna split into two, but it's gonna explode into a million pieces just in two directions. All the rockets are loaded, that thing has to weigh like two tons by now. And remember, there's 12 rockets on there for a total of 75,000 pounds of thrust. And this thing's going to be going 500 miles an hour. If this doesn't split the car, I don't know what will. Well, the safest place to be is in the bunker, so let's get inside. Well, I thought one of us was going to ride it. Let's see how it goes this time, and maybe next time, Buckaroo. Come on. Where's your sense of adventure? Denied a Dr. Strangelove rocket ride. Lockdown. We're ready to launch. Tori hunkers in the bunker with the rest of the team and a strange, eerie silence settles on the scene. The proverbial calm before the storm. This is rocket-powered superplow versus front-engine vehicle going at 500 miles an hour in five, four, three, two, one. Gone in a sixth of a second, the rockets fire and 75,000 pounds of thrust throw the super plow along the track at a spectacular 550 miles per hour. And when the dust and shrapnel settle, the team discovers a spectacular result. We split it up. I cannot believe we split the car in half. Look at it, it went right down the tape line. We have two perfect halves of the car. Did it actually split the engine in half? Yeah, that's rad. Check it out. Now, this is what we couldn't do in Wisconsin. We split the engine block. Well, <laughs> when you get that much force, <laughs> that is crazy. With that complete bifurcation, the guys got exactly what they came for and what you wanted. 
except there seems to be something oh, missing. Sled. But where is the plow? The rockets went so much faster than I expected. It was just shoot. And the car, we couldn't even see it was split in two until we walked up here because there was just so much dirt in the air. We got up here, half a blue car, half a yellow car. Still can't find the witch. That's because it's in a thousand tiny pieces. After cutting a slice through the car, the solid steel super plow disintegrated on impact with a concrete barrier. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I mean, we do a lot of explosions on the show. We do a lot of car crashes, but I have never seen a rocket-powered super plow cut a car in half. And we did it. We replicated the results of this myth. It's still busted, but we replicated the result. So this, my friends, is the hood of our former target car, cut perfectly in half right down the line. Now, even though we succeeded in cutting the car in half, this myth is still busted because this is the ramped up super plow version, not the sort of energy you could run into on the street every day. I don't think we're ever gonna find the wedge. I still cannot believe we cut a car in half. Well, that, my friends, is the end of another excellent experiment.